stone of the rock stolen on the lake. All right, wonder number two. Her mouth was about as cold as his hollows and farms, which is to say, a lot of stuff. You know that sheep in Jackson County? Well, we didn't. There they are. Proof positive. Uh, the Lugan Brothers, they're not exactly a mountain or whatever, but I took this picture from in front of the Tom Bethel Lyceum at Northeast in June of 2012. And I thought for sure that Fife had been bombed. <laughs> from all that appeared, Fife was gone. <laughs> and I was pretty excited about it, just to the truth. Um, because really, we Jackson County need to capture that part of the Cab County as ours. But uh, it's a late afternoon, summer, <coughs> thundercloud coming up. But that made me think of the Leuven Brothers. Jackson Countyans, members of the Country Music Hall of Fame, members of the Alabama Music Hall of Fame, 12 top 25 singles, uh, the greatest thing since Snuff. And their song, That Great Atomic Power. Like I said, it's my slideshow. If you don't think it's logical, go get your own slideshow. <laughs> Do you fear this mountain mansion that they call a comic bar? Are we all in great confusion? Do we know a time or hour? When a terrible explosion may break down upon our land, meeting horrible destruction, blotting out the works of planet. Are you ready, ready for that great atomic power?
said they explored the area in the 1700s and hundreds and thought I'd have a biblical name for like the walls of Jericho to him. Um, 87,000 acres of wildlife management areas in Jackson County. The oxen. This one's looking a little skinny to me. You know, swings. Black Rock, Alabama. Cotton, the old fashioned way. And there was one. Some of these pictures have other pictures up the top there. Peter's Grove Cemetery entrance. Another beautiful vista in Jackson County. We got honeybees. We got redheads. And the infamous Never Sleep Pit. Wonder number three. Our railroads, depots, and the changes they brought. Scottsboro depots. You might have seen the uh, Scottsboro Freight Depot lately. All right, true or false question. True or false, it looks like that today. False. False. It doesn't look like that today because of which fine organization? Texas Indian Historical Association. That's what I thought you were going to say. The passenger depot. Stevenson Shot. Our uh, railroad bridge. It has a French name. I believe in the French it would be Viaduct. We call it Viaduct. <laughs> I like the Aflac duck. It's a fine duck. <laughs> I love this picture. It's from about 1930. It's uh, the Joe Wheeler. Um, back and forth from Chattanooga on the southern. That's the Stevenson Depot, obviously. That the skinny man and his wife was not feeding him properly. Um, and Ernestine Russell, who's in the audience today, uh, said, oh, she saw the picture, she said, oh, that's our shopping train. Isn't that right, Mrs. Russell? Uh, we uh, said, we, we take it to Chattanooga. What'd you say, ma'am? She said, yes, I'm sure. That's a great picture. I mean, that looks like something from the Jetsons to me, the cartoon from the 60s, not 1930. Another statement's in shot. It's cost for a passenger depot and the cover of Life magazine. Another shot of the freight depot made from a passenger train, one of those excursions, I think, the used to run from Huntsville to Chattanooga. Um, folks out waving at the uh, people on the train. You can see hands down through there. Also, two more shots. And there she is today in all those stories. Now, we should have torn it down, is what we should have done. <laughs> and we could have sold bricks and made a lot of money. And that money would be up a wild, excuse me, horse signs behind. And there we'd be. Let's stay with some shot. Bridgeport Depot. Um, in 1917, Spanish Mission style. It's been restored also. This is a restored picture up here at the top. And there's a good restored picture of it. Quite unusual, beautiful building. And they've got a great museum in it too. Paint Rock Depot, y'all seen it lately? Gone. Of course, you see the Hollywood Depot every day. You go through Hollywood, right? Gone. But you see the Lawrenceville Depot, don't you? No, it's. Gone. Come on, work with me. Gone. Gone. Who views the Scottsboro? Who's the gentleman in the handsome red britches? Who? 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 Mr. Borden. Wonder number four, ladies and gentlemen. The first of heavens. Russell Gay. 10,000 years of human habitation at Russell Gay in this county. Uh, that's the cover of uh, National Geographic, March 1958, when the first explorations were going on. Um, can't read it too well, but it says, Russell K. New Lights on Stone Age Life. And then here, the second one is, National Geographic Society presents Russell K. to the American people. Um, and they used to have a pit there, it's gone now, but it showed the, uh, the layers 
that they dug down through and compared how early people were, Russell K, the late archaic period right here, um, with other famous events in Western history, <coughs> such as the first pottery, um, the pyramids at Giza in Egypt. Moses took his people and marched out of Egypt. It took him 40 years, he wouldn't stop and ask for directions, etc. Um, so that's a great illustration to me. It fascinated me as a child. Another shot of Russell Kay. Um, Russell Kay is imagined with people there. A misty shot of Russell Kay. Uh, a book about Russell Kay, investigations of Russell Kay. Now, this is not Russell Kay. Um, this is a Native American piece of art. It is made in mud. It is on the ceiling of a cave um, in this camp. And I know where it is, and I'm not telling Nana Nana Boo Boo. Um, I've taken the blood of it, but I will not remember where it is. Um, but it's a bird. It's these wings, beak down here in the head. Um, and it's unique for a number of reasons. One is that it's pressed into the uh, wet mud, and it's still wet, it's still mud, it's still there. Um, and it's on a ceiling also. But it's a very low ceiling, it's in a passageway that I think is probably no higher than this uh, podium. Crowtown was one of the uh, five lower towns established by the Chickamauga Cherokees in 1782 under the leadership of the great chief. Y'all know that, don't you? The great chief of the Chickamauga Cherokees. Who said it? So, Dragging Canoe, that's exactly right. Um, there are five of those towns. Running Water, Nickajack, Long Island Town, Lookout Mountain Town, and Crow Town. Crow Town is at Stevenson at the site of the now defunct Bud's Barbecue. Um, one of the greatest tragedies ever took the fall of Stevenson, Alabama. It was when our barbecue joint went out of business. But, uh, so, um, it had several miles that you could call Crow Town by the low, low, early 1800s. Um, and uh, 1819, when Jackson County and Alabama were created, most of the Cherokee moved south of the river to get away from us. And who could blame them, really? Um, and the original site of Crow Town was flooded in 1939 with waters from Gunnersville Dam. Several years ago, it's probably been 10 or 12 years ago now, I guess, our association put up uh, this marker at the barbecue place site there on Highway 72. Um, to commemorate the history of Crowtown. Trail of Tears, we know more about it in this county, probably because of motorcycles than any other reason. For 22 years, annually, the Trail of Tears commemorated a motorcycle ride across the top of Alabama. Um, 1831 to 1838, Indian removal, um, and all 46,000 Native Americans from the Southeast were removed, opening up 25 million acres for white people, yeah, white settlers. Um, no need to thank us for doing that. Now, wonder number five, the Civil War and our legacy. Um, whose slideshow is it? Yours. It's my slideshow. Ergo, this is my great-grandfather. Flavius Josephus Graham, uh, who uh, moved to Edgefield in 1853, he was captain of the Civil War, along with his brother, Dr. Mike Graham. Um, I wish that we had named Redmond Flavius Josephus Graham V, because, as his mother says, he's just like him. Y'all are all alike. Bless his heart. This is a receipt for a horse of his that was killed in battle. You see those words? For one horse killed in battle. Valued at $150. There's not a horse in this county now worth $150, I don't think. This is the depot at Stevenson. It is not the depot that is there today. It's a different building, same location. You see the word Stevenson right there. Notice that interesting molding across the front. Soldiers gathered around. 
Apparently they didn't understand these were tracks and that trains would come along and run over them. Um, this is the uh, crown jewel of the collection of uh, our association, a map, a schematic drawing showing where the various troops and regiments were in Scottsboro, and then the uh, uh, marker that our group put up. I think it's fair to say, and based on this letter and drawing, is it not? That tells about where they were. That's over there in the Scottsboro Freight Depot. If you haven't seen it, you need to go look at it today before the rain starts. Perfectly. Um, this is Mrs. Graham's house in Stevenson. She lets me sleep there from time to time. <laughs> it's called the Cowan House because they owned it for a long time. And maybe we've owned it 150 years. They put Mrs. Graham's name on it too. Um, these are the Yankees on the porch, as I call them. This one looks sort of like a scarecrow to me over here. Um, but uh, this is Vladimir Krasinowski, um, who was a uh, colonel in the Union Army, uh, was made a brevet brigadier general, and uh, we call him General Krasinowski. Um, he was quite famous after the war. He was a Pole from Poland. He is to this day considered a national hero in Poland. He came here to uh, New York headed up a regiment, a company, a troop of uh, soldiers that fought in war and uh, rose through the ranks pretty rapidly. Um, now, it may have just been politics, but in the 1930s when FDR, parenthesis, thank God for TVA, close parenthesis, uh, was in the White House, General Krasinowski's uh, body and that of his wife were disinterred cemetery in New York, and they were transferred to Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, FDR declared a national day of mourning, and they were given a state funeral. Um, and they are buried there for this good day, I guess, until somebody decides to dig them up and take them somewhere else, and among the heroes of the land. Um, and that was probably more politics than it was anybody, but it happened. This is another view of the Cowan House in Stevenson's <coughs> headquarters. We know it's the headquarters because of this very large Union flag flying over it. Um, and uh, you can see tents around, soldiers marching, horses. Uh, a lot of timber cut down. Why do you think a lot of timber might have been cut down in that area? Fire, wood. Uh, steam engines, line of sight, so forth and so on. This is Fort Harker that we have at Stevenson. This is when our association visited several years ago and we had a reenactment. Um, so Earthen Fort, it's open to the public every day. If you haven't been, I suggest you go. That's uh, the uh, siege at Bridgeport, battle reenactment. Another view of Stevenson with General Rosecrans here. Um, those of you who know Stevenson, this is a picture of the depot that we showed you earlier right there. It's downtown Stevenson, the old Alabama house, which is gone. Um, and if you know where Mrs. Graham lives, um, that house, will, our house will be about right there, the Cowan house that I just showed you a moment ago. It's another shot of Fort Harker showing the earthen walls and the dry moat around it. So another drawing of Fort Harker from the day. The same sort of tents set up back there. The temporary houses. This is a great picture. General Rosecrans crossing the Tennessee River at Stevenson on Catherine's, at Catherine's Ferry on a pontoon bridge. The river was 1,200 feet wide at that time. They built this pontoon bridge during the uh, night and they started crossing just as the sun was coming up because there were snipers on the bluffs up at what we know now as Flat Rock. Um, so they built it under cover of darkness and started moving men and equipment across it, headed towards Chickamauga. This is General Rosecrans right here with his sword raised. This is uh, one of eight huge murals of the Civil War that were painted during the war, which are now in the Smithsonian Institution. Um, and I forget the length of it, but it's 
eight or ten feet tall behind this. They're just absolutely huge. Wonder number six.